Francina Hall-Rez is the founder, chairman, and CEO of the Charlotte-based Total Protection Services. And as CEO, she leads the nation's first African-American woman-owned business in the nuclear security sector. Welcome to North Carolina Now. Thank you for being here. Well, we would love to hear more about your company, which focuses on high threat, close proximity safety. Tell us a little bit about what that means. We provide individuals to protect our nuclear power plants by way of guns, technology, and intelligence. That's what we have done for 12 years, protect our nuclear power plants. And I know that I read that you really started out as a computer science teacher in the public <laughs> schools. I went way back and started staffing. Yes. And after 9-11, talk a little bit about how the nuclear security came into play. Well, since you went back to my teaching years, we, we had an opportunity to become a part of our North Carolina community college system uh, in a time where they were seeking minority and women-owned instructors in our community college. So I was approached to uh, teach at one of our uh, community colleges locally, uh, COBOL, RPG, programming, the old days. And it was definitely an experience at that time. But as we've progressed with technology, and particularly with cyber threats that we have today, and our computer systems, our grids that we've become very familiar with in the nuclear space, uh, it, everything has been compromised by the algorithms, uh, the basic structure of, of IT has been compromised uh, considerably by our uh, intelligence. So after 9-11, who approached you to begin staffing at these nuclear plants? Duke Energy Corporation uh, called out of Charlotte and uh, asked if I would consider, uh, I guess, parlaying my uh, staffing background into the nuclear security regulatory space. And of course, we uh, evaluated that. And after six months, we decided we could do that. So we applied basically our skill sets from our human resources corporation that we um, founded right here in Raleigh uh, for 17 years. And we were able to transition into a regulatory environment that required more of uh, human capital and physical fitness, as well as mental alertness and processes for regulatory work. So those are the three areas that gave us a, a step up as it relates to staffing and recruiting. Now as we talk about nuclear power plants, many of these are built near rural areas and this creates an opportunity for staffing in areas that are a lot of times um, economically depressed. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. I am so happy to be in this space and uh, to be a conduit to employ some of our unemployed in these rural areas where many of our power plants are being built and are existing uh, for a number of years. And so we have discovered that in these rural areas, because it has to be by a large body of water, uh, usually a lake or an ocean, and so with that geographic location, the population in those areas are oftentimes uh, your, your urban uh, residents, your rural areas, which uh, that population is not oftentimes privileged to much of the uh, education and training we get in the city areas. So we found uh, a unique uh, industry um, and also a, a time when security is certainly at the forefront of all of our brains. And uh, so, so we're able to employ, recruit, select, train, and hire, and employ these uh, individuals in rural communities. And it's exciting that we can begin to see economic growth uh, when we can employ uh, individuals, they can feed their families, they can educate their children. And we've got a long way to go, but that's where we are now. We've done that for 12 years and positioned to expand even greater. What type of training is involved when you do recruit these individuals? A lot of regulatory training initially for the nuclear space. And that's where we've been able to leverage that intelligence and knowledge in, in the regulatory space to apply it uh, down to the second level that's non-regulatory. 
So we're able to apply regulatory uh, uh, training uh, skills to the non-regulatory uh, security professional in ways that deal with the mindset, you know, helping them understand what they are protecting, what nuclear power is, and the criticalness of what we're protecting there. So. Now you are a security and safety advocate, and you go through many ways to improve security in our lives. Can you talk a lot about those, a few of those? Of course. Since our uh, Boston uh, incident, uh, we've had several shootings, um, break-ins, compromising on our grids. So we are a firm believer and have experienced in uh, just getting back to the simple basics. I have encouraged families to come back together, to sit at the table and ask questions. You know, ask your children what they're experiencing in school, in their activities. Parents, husband and wife, talk to each other. Figure out what's going on in your threatscapes. And so that has been the fundamental basis for securing our mindsets is to become aware of what each of us are experiencing every day in our lives that may be a threat. And once we do that, we can collectively, as a family, as a unit, codify all the information that we have and assign parts where everyone around the table becomes a security observer for the family. So when you step out of that home, everyone is empowered to protect themselves. And that's what we found is our greatest uh, success in securing our mindsets. You, you spoke of a heightened awareness as we hear news of overseas. How is this affecting your staffing uh, right now in the government sector and in the nuclear security sector? Well, at this time, uh, the Syria Middle East unrest is uh, it's affecting all of us, in, I think, in an unusual way, as more need for development of the workforce. Uh, just like we're developing our workforce here. There's unemployment, there's unrest in our nation, and there's unrest in the Middle East. And so what we have uh, proposed in the middle of this unrest is let's focus on developing the people. Let's give them skills. Let's give the mothers and the parents skills to be entrepreneurs, uh, to actually go into the workforce to have a job. So I believe that when there's war, it's an opportune time to create peace. So it's affected us in a positive way. It's, it's allowed us to look at a situation that's, that's pretty bleak and create opportunity for hope. Can you tell our viewers of where, if they would like to see more information about security, how to improve security in their lives, where should they go? Website, www.total-protections.com. That's our website. All right. Thank you so much, Francina Hallres, for being here with us to share. Thank you. Thank you.